Hello. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Let me know in the chat if so. Sounds that way, at least on Twitch. Maybe a little quiet on Twitch. I'll bring up the volume just a tiny bit. Maybe I'll bring the mic a little closer. Let's see what this is like. what the typing sounds like. Is that too bad? Not too bad. started. Hello and welcome to another B3D and Chill. That stands for Blender 3D and chill in case you're new joining us for the first time or if you forgot i meant to do these a little bit more consistently but the past week has been pretty busy given that blendernist which is a podcast that i'm a part of that focuses on um, highlighting creators and updates not only in blender which is a 3d modeling and animation software, but just 3D and an animation world more generally. Just recently opened up a Discord server for the community. Um, I also opened my server uh, concurrently with that, and so the upkeep of both of those has been taking up a lot of my time, uh, my free time, in the past couple of weeks, uh, or not last past couple of weeks, but <laughs> honestly, it's felt like it's been more than a week. Within the span of a little bit over a week, we um, now have about 500 people on the server. The links to both the servers that I mentioned, mine and Blenderness, can be found in the description of this video if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're watching on Twitch, um, unfortunately, I guess I could type it into the chat and share you on both. Um, so let me do that really quickly. But I hope you've been well. That's why this stream has taken some time to go underway. I've been focused on both creating, crafting, and helping maintain the community there. I'll post a link to my server on the Twitch chat, or, well, on both at this point. Um, so here is that link on Twitch, and here is a link on YouTube, and I'll be sharing the link to the Blenderness server as well right after that. 
to join the server, you don't need to have any sort of, there's no prerequisites for either one. They're both community servers that you can join if you want to take part in conversations and um, events surrounding 3D animation and the like. And it's a community that's built by people who are focused on um, and impassioned with teaching and learning. So it's a good space to be a part of. And uh, I've been really happy with the turnout. We've been hosting these community conversations with people who are um, in all ranges of skill, talent, renown uh, in the community, age as well, um, who have knowledge and wisdom to impart and share both in terms of the use of Blender, which is a tool that we focus on. Um, and the industry, so working at companies, organizations, working as freelancers, directors, animators, um, visualizers, and what have you. It's a good time. So I highly encourage you to check both out. That's what I've been working on for the past week or so, and I've kind of stepped away from this piece, but as I said, I want to work on two um, two more of these streams after this one, make this a seven part series, so it feels like seven hours or so of work, or a week, if you think about it in terms of days, um, before wrapping it up, and I've got I've gotten kind of ambitious with it. I'll switch over quickly to a rendered view so you can see what it's starting to look like now. And I'm happy with the way that it's turning out so far. It's gonna take some time for this to update. So in the meantime, I'm gonna quickly check the chat in both um, YouTube and Twitter just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Looks good. And part of doing this too is trying to get this streaming setup underway and try to get some streams under my belt just to get more comfortable with the whole thing. At the moment I'm working with um, laptop and screen and my phone and the phone is now what's going to help me drive Streamlabs which is the application that I'm using to stream to both YouTube and Twitch at the same time and manage the chat as well as separate scenes. So something fun that I can do, or maybe not fun but useful, is toggle between different screens where I can, for example, tap this one and that should change the scene and now show some tickers at the top left that I've set up to show how many people are watching. Um, and then if I just tap away on my phone, it switches to something else, and this is useful because that means that I don't have to toggle between one and the other. Um, and I've used some of these tools before, but trying to figure out how they fit and work into my own um, goals for streaming is has been a fun experience so far. So thanks for joining in on that. And I'll get started. If I miss your comment, I think the best way to ping me would be to join either of the Discord servers and message me there because I'll get a notification. Otherwise, Blender is taking up my whole screen at the moment. But now you get a sense of where we left off on this scene in the last stream. And I'll quickly toggle back to Eevee because it will help us move around a bit, uh, with more ease. And one moment, great. And so where we last left off, I actually, I'll be honest with you, I didn't watch the last stream back like I thought I would in order to take notes on the things that I wanted to change. Um, so we're gonna essentially start this one with fresh eyes. Like I said, the both servers that have been underway have been taking up a lot of my attention in these past couple of days and it's it's for a good cause so I'm not bothered about that um, 
I'm, I'm actually really happy with the results of opening up the server to the community and, and how people have been so excited to join and take part. Um, but what I did want to do um, was just continue this series and make sure that it doesn't fall behind so that I can move on to the next one because I'll be honest with you, I'm already somewhat bored of this and thinking of other ideas of things that I could do on stream like for example model a better waiting screen than the current 2D waiting screen that I have and incorporate some music and the like and these are the sort of things that I could do on stream too so with that in mind Let's get things moving. Okay. So when we last left... <clears throat> excuse me. Where we last left off, I think I'd mentioned that I was going to use Ian Hubert's car generator to try and do a better job with these cars. But I think I'll skip that. Um, because... I'm not too sure, I've played around with it a little bit, but I'm not too sure what's reasonable to share on stream and what's not, uh, as far as how it works out, given that it's some it's a product, in some ways, of Patreon, um, which is something that I think is a really powerful and useful tool for creators and something I'm strongly considering, especially in the context of creating these streams and... Um, being able to fund, in some ways, the development of my art. So I'm going to take these two um, and I think something we can do is just look for a let's look for something. I'm going to quickly use this to see if toggle back. Uh, so what I'm doing is behind the scenes here. I'm looking for an image of a restaurant inside. Let's see if that will work. Yes, and I see one. Um, I'm just going to save the very first one that I find. Save image as. You won't be able to see this, but it's okay. You're not missing out on anything fun. And I've deliberately set it up so that you don't see this because I just want to make sure that I'm not giving away any family secrets. Okay, so now we'll, I'll come back in Blender now that that's been saved and select this. These pieces essentially go into edit mode, A to select all. And just before I forget, let me quickly turn on screencast keys so that when I do things like shift A, you can see what I'm doing. And that way I don't have to call out every single move which can get pretty overwhelming. Great. So now we'll make this... Oh, that's not what I meant to do, actually. Make sure we've got this selected. What happens when we move it? Great, it's just the panes. And so now this is it meant to be its own material, and we'll call it restaurant inside or not. I also said I would go back and clean this up but I didn't because I didn't really anticipate that. Um, honestly, I was su pleasantly surprised that so many people joined the server so quickly. And so in some ways it got out of hand, but in the best ways and it's kept me busy. But we're back on track. Great, so now I'm searching for this file within the mess that is my computer, the organized mess. And I know that I've saved it under my drive, under Blender, Projects, and here it is. So it's going to look all out of shape. That's okay. We'll go into the UV Editor. Here, oops. Well, it doesn't really matter. UV Editor. Select this select the, it's called the restaurant inside, I believe, or perhaps not. Hmm. 
So I'm just quickly searching for that. Oh, it's called French Quarter Entry Bar. So maybe that's what it's under, French Quarter. Yep, there we go. And now we have the image I found on the interweb. Excuse me. So I'll quickly um, unwrap this. And for some reason, Screencast Keys doesn't want to show up here. But um, we'll just deal with it. It's fine. Unwrap by hitting U and hmm, what happens if I I don't want this division because that doesn't make sense. But actually, for the purposes of what this is going to be used for, it doesn't really matter. So I'll just grab them both and maybe we'll leave it like this. Get this side and then grab just this face. Select it here. We choose a different section of the bar. It's upside down, so we'll just rotate it 180 degrees. There we go. And we can kind of match it up, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Great. And one other thing that we want to do is we want to plug this into the emission. And now, yes, this should shed some light. And if we bump up the emission strength, looks a little ridiculous, but we start to get some of the effect of this light here that I added earlier. So, see now that's kind of looks a bit more realistic in some ways. But there's light panning there, and I don't know that we'll actually see this end of the restaurant. Maybe from this angle, if we were to pan. Initially I wanted to do this as an animation, but I think I've changed my mind. I'm happy with just rendering this out as an image, if I can get it to look moody enough um, for my liking. So we'll jump back here. Am I embarrassingly on the wrong screen? No, great. Um, and this wasn't looking all that great. In fact, I was considering getting rid of it altogether just because this specific scan of this object is a little lumpy and it just kind of breaks the scene a little bit, especially when it's next to this less lumpy looking um, design that we've done. And... So with that in mind, if we just move this out, I think we can, hmm, we can leave it, leave it in. I'm trying to think of how I would animate the camera for this scene and what would make sense. Um, one other side project that I worked on, if I can save this one quickly, it's my reminder to save and your reminder to stretch. One other project that I worked on recently was, do I have it here? I don't. Um, but I essentially took a scan, or no. I asked my friend, Greg, to scan his face, and he kindly did and sent it to me. And I think I'll just try to import that here and see if I can't set him up somewhere. Let's see. OBJ. Mm -hmm. So I'm just quickly going through my project files here. See if I can't pull up that file of Greg. Yes. Oh my. This might just be his head. Um, I've chosen... Yeah, imp... What I want to do is link... Or is it a pen? I think it might be a pen. Greg. Hmm. I'll, I'll just show you what it looks like. I'll open the project. Or not? Why is it not showing me? Oh, 
Oh boy. Well. Something I can do then is append myself, because I did work on a project. Oh, here we go, I found it. I just named it something completely different. Okay, that makes sense. Collection. Let's see if this brings in what I think it should bring in. Perhaps not. Interesting. Okay, well, none of that is working for some reason. But I'll just get rid of all of these. There we go. We'll just pretend that never happened. So, actually, this camera angle up here, I really liked for some reason. I think if we hide all of these things, this kind of gives a really, sets a really moody tone for the scene. If we were to give it some sort of moody lighting, it could work. I'm going to world shader here and maybe add some more fog. Unlike the other streams that I've done in this series, um, you might be catching on to the fact that this one hasn't been fully thought out in terms of what I would like to do. I mean, if we're going on this angle, something you might see that would help us also hide some of the things that are broken is. Um, you might see some some of those, what do they call them? Just like parking um, I'm blanking on my words again I don't know, like parking signs, parking meter? Well parking sign is definitely something you would see so maybe I'll add those too But what I'm going for is more of the these blocks that show up in parking lots. Do you know what I mean? parking space signifier something or other and um, I'm sure that there's some trickery that we can do in terms of vector displacement to get the edges of them and make it look all worn and maybe we'll do that but not today because I'm I won't lie to you I don't really know off the top of my head how to do that, but it's something that I could very easily learn thanks to YouTube tutorials and also all the different tools that my friends in the space have made available. So, And these are never, 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 never um, what's the word? 
They're never in the same spot, even though they all look to be lined up. Even though they may look like they're lined up. Just make a new material for these and call it parking space. And there's other crazy things we could do with the texture, like we could actually paint out the parking space, but we won't even, we won't see it from the camera angle, so what's the point? Having these here, though, will help us sell the idea that this is actually a parking lot, and that's kind of what we want. Um, I'm actually going to delete this one, because I should have just hit Alt-D to duplicate it in such a way that... Um, I'm getting a copy of it, so whenever I adjust one, like this, for example, maybe, you know, I can just work with them both simultaneously. So hit that, grab all the linked ones, and then stretch it out this way a little bit. Maybe grab this top face and squish it in. For some reason. What I'm trying to do is um, just not using the right operation. There's a million and one ways to achieve the same thing within Blender and all 3D software. And This looks about right, and I think something we can do. Don't want to use an image texture. I mean, we could, but we don't really have to. Can add noise texture. Got to be careful with those, though, because they can slow you down. We'll do object. Oh yes. And we will add a color ramp so we can get some different color variations here. Some yellow. Some light yellow. Maybe some orange. Nope. Some different types of yellow. This is not a surface that's rough, really. I mean, they look slightly convincing. I think I would have to look at an image. Oh, hey, Tiago, thanks for joining. I'm sorry if I missed your note in the chat. But I appreciate you joining us over on YouTube. And I uh, can't see the chat on Twitch for some reason. Oh, here we go. It's blacked out. Yeah, I mean, they look slightly convincing from a distance. Maybe the texture is really what's messing it up. And I think if I just rotate it a little bit. And maybe it's not even this. I want maybe like random. Or what is it? Object info? Yeah. Mm, is it random? Is that what I want? That doesn't look right. Just stick with the texture coordinate here. Give it object. And yeah, it looks terrible. Might be that these don't actually have this sort of. Yeah, might be a matter of doing this. So now we've got this like strange warping here in the face. No, 
not sure why. But again, uh, I keep coming back to Decoded's video. Um, because in it, he talks about how basically don't want to spend too much time in, on things that are going to be so tiny on this in the scene and in terms of this scene that we've got laid out here like these don't take up that much space really so what's the point of spending a whole 45 minutes on it if when we turn this on you know it's not even going to be that Uh, it's not going to be showing that much. One thing I'm kind of troubled by is that it feels like this is a really tiny space to park a car, you know, or to drive a car into the drive through um, Maybe that's just a matter of scaling this down a tiny bit. These cars look really messed up. <laughs> Let's see. Applying scale, this is always something that I forget to do. Can't apply it to multi-user? Okay, well. We'll let it slide, I guess. And what's this? Oh, the light. I don't understand why it's this long. Let's just delete it. Okay. So, so far we've done nothing <laughs> but let's let's just get a little interesting here just for a moment If I were to add this plane here, which I've just done, subdivide it a little bit. Actually, I could just do this by hitting subdivide, and then subdivide again, subdivide again. I can bring in grass fold. Actually, before we even get to that add a material to it, call it dirt, make it dark brown, which for some reason took me forever to realize it's just orange, or orange is it, yeah, you get the point. Bring the roughness down, or up, rather. And now we'll create a system with new settings. We'll give it some generic grass blades and increase the density so that it fills the space. And getting an issue here. The reason I added the cube is because a cube is about the size of a really tall person, so maybe what we need to do is um, just bring the size down of the grass and decrease the density a little bit. 
if you increase the density and st still bring the size down that just look fake as heck That looks a little bit better, um, but I think we would still need to maybe edit this plane. So let's just do this and bring it up. And you know, sometimes, like it, like with photography one of my going to box modeling here just so I can pick these out better what is happening one of my tenets when I'm photographing whether it's people or landscapes or whatever is that I like to do what it takes to get the shot that means climbing up on something that I shouldn't be climbing on. Sometimes that's what it takes to get the shot. And similarly here, I'm not saying this is the best way to go around a problem like this one. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. But as I've said on different installments of this, if you're not handing this off to a client, um, who cares? It's all just part of the practice of the practice. And at the end of the day, the more the most important thing is that you just keep up the practice. Or at least that's what I tell myself. Great, so now we've got a somewhat warped plane that I feel better about just pushing through the ground. But maybe that's a little too much. Still. We don't want to render these just for rendering sake, but we also want it to look real, you know, make it make sense. There we go, and I think from this camera view, nope, you can definitely see it. And there might be some way to paint the, um, the distribution here. Whoops, what have I done? But I haven't played with Grasswald enough to know. Oh, I didn't mean to hit that. Accidentally hit it. We'll just bring it up a little bit more. I mean, I think this is fine. You get the idea, right? There's some grass growing out of there. Maybe what we'll do is we'll pull it back a bit from those bricks just so that it seems like the trash bin is just interrupting that space and then we're losing all this losing all this grass we generated for what? with this and I think actually just to keep it from looking too 
rigid. Could even do a cheeky little turn like that. And if we wanted to, could also place some grass here. Give it a sense of realism. Slightly. check back. This looks reasonable. I can cut this off here. Leave the camera view and just select this face. Get rid of it. You don't need it. Select this. Apply the scale now. And we can do the same thing to this. Grasswald and go to the outliner, add a new system with new settings. Just get some generic grass. And I think I've added it to the wrong thing. Maybe not. There we go. Oh, it's moving. Okay. density. Interesting. Wait, what was I moving just now? Oh, the seed. Okay. Similarly, maybe you wanted to grab this plane and apply the ground material. Where is it? Oh, we actually have one from previously, so there you go. It looks stretched, but we can't really see it, so who cares? Ground. And does it look... looks trash. Size. the seed here, cover some things, uncover others. This is fine, we don't really have to, maybe instead of having it be this young grass, we can have it be some old grass. Yeah, it looks a bit better. Maybe this one's also some old grass. Yeah. I'm liking that. MW Rodolphin 93 on Twitch says, want to become famous by followers and viewers. <laughs> I don't want to become famous, but I appreciate the offer. You bought. So we've added some grass and some parking space things and we get a sense of realism I'm going to quickly go back to one of these servers I was talking about earlier because I know that my friend Sharan who goes by just 3D things online gave me some tips as to what I could do to add some realism on one of the feedback channels on these servers. So I want to make sure that um, that I act on that feedback 
because I think it was good. Just need to scroll through a bunch of feedback because again, this, this community server where several people can come and ask for help. So if you've got something you're working on that you think would be good for other people to um, give some eyes and opinions on, that's the place to do it. I'm trying to remember which one it was. It may have been in the super super secret server that we can't talk about. Let's see. Nope. Jeez. Well, unfortunately, I can't find it, so I guess that's out the window. Oh, no, I found it. Great. Let's see. So he says that lighting needs believability, visual clarity, and to convey emotion. So I need some fill light for the environment, and that I should use an HDRI and mix it with a dark blue color. Yeah, I think that's I think that's sensible. I think I'm gonna rotate this too slightly. thing unfortunately that's throwing this off for me is this so I'm gonna delete it or I'll just um, I'll just hide it from now for now what would make sense to fill this space here maybe a sign of some sort it's sticking out of the wall we'll leave that there as a placeholder for now and one other thing that I think would help make this make more sense is if we had a cable of some sort. Cables dangling. Um, so I think what I'll do is I will add a... Path. And if I go into edit mode and I add a... on it. There might be some simpler way of doing this that I'm just not thinking of at the moment. Basically what I want to do is make a cable. So cables add realism. Believe it or not. And um, let's see, maybe I can add it now. What happens if I do solidify? Oh, that kind of looks like not what we're looking for. <laughs> With size. No. Convert to mesh. And now if we give this a skin modifier, whoa. Beefy. Not what we're looking for. Maybe a Given that I'm pretty sure I'm the only one watching, I'm just going to quickly look up how to make cable in Blender.
use a curve Bezier curve oh yeah so I used the wrong one use the wrong curve okay let's try that then we'll delete this path and add a Bezier 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 curve and what is this saying place and orient the control points of your cable to deform it and add gravity select both points and press W to subdivide okay whoa why is this like this did I add two by accident Oh, these are the points, I see. Oops. Okay. So we kind of want the cable. Why is this so difficult to see? There we go. It's because it's night out. We want this cable. Why do I keep switching to that mode? I mean, this looks kind of fine. Next step. Use V to select intermediate cuts to automatic. Keep a smooth curve. Okay, but first thing is we want to select both handles. And hit W to subdivide. That didn't subdivide, so maybe right click then subdivide. There we go. And now we hit V, automatic. And what this should do is keeps a smooth curve. Then we position it and we add multiple points. Okay, well I don't really care too much about curviness. And now we want to make sure that this curve has some volume. So what do we do? Set the fill mode to full. Where is that? Here. Okay, fill mode, full. It is. And then in the geometry, roll out under bevel, just depth. Geometry bevel depth oh yeah now we're talking look at that Google is your friend when you don't know how to do things one other solution that I wanted to avoid just because it would require you to download things but it's one that I think is like extremely valid and useful thing to know is that Sketchfab which is a website that hosts hundreds of thousands of free and paid 3D assets. It's also probably a good place to download textures, or no, sorry, not textures, models. So I could just really quickly download a model um, off of Sketchfab to plug in to here. So we've got this cable, this light probably also needs a cable. We'll just, um, uh, actually, I'll just delete that. And we can make this look like it's going somewhere. As opposed to just being there like a snake in the grass. And don't worry about that, that's just um, Grasswald doing his thing. Yeah, so that's cable. Cable's fine. And we can put something here. 
think we could also um, so let me save it here that's my reminder to save and your reminder to drink water if you haven't already One thing we could add is a camera. I modeled a, a camera for a Blender Royale on Arendelle's Discord. And if you don't know what a Blender Royale is, it's essentially a fun get together where people from the Blender community will sit and work on a project um, together. Sometimes uh, it's themed. Sometimes the theme gets chosen day of, and you have about 45 minutes to either work on a team or on your own, depending on what the given day is, on that project. And it's a really fun way to get to meet people and hang out. Unfortunately, I think I did that on a different computer, so I don't have it. But the camera that I made was simple enough to be recreated so I'll just quickly create one. Let's hide this outliner and we'll just add a cube and we'll let's just work up here because why not. So basically we want one of those CCTV cameras closed circuit television cameras. And maybe it might be worth working from reference. So I'll quickly save a photo of one. And this one doesn't look at all like the one that I wanted to make, but you know what? That's life. It's just the one that I could find the fastest. So let's do this reference. And there's definitely other ways to bring in reference images. Like you can work using PureRef, which is a free tool that essentially... Um, oh, what have I done? Yeah, PureRef is a tool that just lets you bring in reference images and you can actually overlay the window on top of whatever tool you happen to be using. And it's really useful and helpful, but I don't feel like using it right now. So want to keep everything inside Blender in the 3D space. Yeah, so... Okay, we've got this camera. Maybe we'll just go with the cylinder, because why not? So let's just put it up here. And we'll just... we'll rough it in doesn't have to be perfect it's going to be a very small portion of the well, of what we see the one benefit I guess of working um, let's remove the oh what keeps happening when I do that for some reason my shortcut to move to undo the rotation is just not working alt R yeah 